the Raptors are stuck in the same predicament as they were last year. So I was scrolling through social media and I was scrolling through articles and I came across a story about the Toronto Raptors. And in the story, it was reported by Michael Grange. He's a reporter for Sportsnet. So he covers the Toronto Raptors extensively. He's kind of like a beat writer, but not really. But anyways, he reported that the Toronto Raptors, well, the Toronto Raptors management, the higher ups, they feel like their roster is not at all inferior to teams in the Eastern Conference that we've seen go deeper into the playoffs. So they feel as if they are on the same level almost in terms of roster as the Miami Heat who just went to the NBA Finals or the Boston Celtics. Now that's incredibly delusional, right? Why? Well, the Toronto Raptors got bounced out in the play-in tournament by the Chicago Bulls. The Miami Heat beat the Chicago Bulls in a play-in tournament. The Miami Heat also then went on to go to the finals. So I don't know why the Toronto Raptors would think their roster right now is good. I don't know why the Toronto Raptors front office or management is, in, is so in love with this iteration of the Toronto Raptors roster. I don't like this roster right i've been screaming for a few years now that something needs to change from the toronto raptors and if it doesn't then they're going to stay stagnant they're going to be a middle of the pack type of team in which they're not good enough for lottery picks and they're not good enough to go into the playoffs and that's what we've seen from the toronto raptors in the past two years or so right in in the last two years what has happened the toronto raptors lost in a play-in tournament this year to the chicago bulls a team they could have easily beat I mean, if you go back to watch that game, the Toronto Raptors were leading by a huge margin in the first half, right? And then they choked and Patrick Beverly made fun of them. And then if you go last year to the playoffs, what happened? The Toronto Raptors lost in the second round to the Philadelphia 76ers. And if you go back in 2021, they lost again in the second round. I'm forgetting exactly to which team, but they lost in the second round, right? So they become this middle of the pack team in which they just consistently lose at the first or second round of the playoffs, right? And it's been like that since Kawhi Leonard left and, and since Kyle Lowry left. So to me, it's clearly obvious what the problem is. This current iteration has hit its ceiling. It, it's stagnated. There, there's nothing this iteration. And when I mean this iteration of the Toronto Raptors, I mean the Pascal Siakam led Toronto Raptors with Fred Van Vliet as their second best player with Gary Trent Jr. You're not going to do anything in the Eastern Conference, right? So that's why I have a problem with this report because it's extremely delusional. There, no way are the Toronto Raptors on the same level as the Miami Heat. You, I mean, you guys know that. The Miami Heat went to the finals. They just beat the Boston Celtics. Do you think the Raptors would have beaten the same Boston Celtics that the Heat beat? No, no. Like, do you think the Toronto Raptors would have beat the Milwaukee Bucks and then the Boston Celtics and then take a game off of the Denver Nuggets? No, not at all. So to me, it's always been clear that something needs to change. Massive overhaul needs to happen. And as a Toronto Raptors fan, I'm a little bit frustrated because the offseason has started and teams are making moves in order to better their rosters, right? The new owner of the Phoenix Suns, when he came in, he wasted no time, right? The Phoenix Suns, prior to the new owner, never made any big moves. Like for my whole lifetime, the Phoenix Suns sucked. He came in there, right? And in the last three years, the Phoenix Suns have traded for Chris Paul and traded Chris Paul away. They have gotten Kevin Durant and they've gotten Bradley Beal. He is making moves in order to make the roster better now, like buying in. Chris Dapps Porzingis just got traded to the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics lost to the Miami Heat and they're already improving the roster. So when I see moves like that, things teams are doing in order to better the roster and I look at my Toronto Raptors and they're not doing anything stagnant, nothing, right? They're holding on to these players that I know just aren't good enough. They're not good enough for where we want to be as a team. I get frustrated, especially when I go back and I think about what Masai Ujiri said right after they lost to the Chicago Bulls in the play-in tournament. He said major changes were coming to the Toronto Raptors. Granted, he did make a huge change. He hired the assistant coach of the 
Memphis Grizzlies. And so the Toronto Raptors have a new head coach, right? But that's not good enough. Roster changes need to happen. I've been a big advocate of moving off of Pascal Siakam. He's a great player. He's a great asset. Unfortunately, he's just not good enough to elevate the Toronto Raptors to where we could be, where we should be, where we're able to compete with the likes of the Milwaukee Bucks, with the likes of the Miami Heat, with the likes of the Boston Celtics. We can think we are able to compete with them all we want, but the proof is in the pudding. You know what I mean? We have three years of playoffs results to show for it. Right? And so it's frustrating because the Toronto Raptors are more than likely not going to do anything significant in, in this offseason, right? Because I also saw a report that the Toronto Raptors are hard to bargain with. The team, other teams are frustrated with how the Toronto Raptors bargain or, or talks around some of their players because some of their players are really coveted, right? Um, OG Ananobi has been really coveted around the NBA. Every single offseason since last year, he was talked about. He was talked about at the trade deadline, and he's sought after again. He's sought after again this offseason. He is hot commodity. The Toronto Raptors could get so much more for OG Ananobi. And OG Ananobi has been with the Toronto Raptors for what? Since 2017? How many years is that? Five years? Was it 2016? He's been with them for half a decade or more. It, it hasn't shown any promise. It hasn't really shown anything. Right? I mean, Jason Tatum has been with the Boston Celtics since 2017, five years, has reached the finals, has become an all-star. If OG Anunoby was going to become this grandiose player that the Toronto fans think he's going to be, he would have been already. The thing is, he's just not as good as they think he is. He's very good at a particular thing, and that is wing defense, right? He can defend the wing at an incredible rate. And other teams are looking, other teams, especially in the Western Conference, are looking for that in order to guard guys like Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, right? Um, LeBron James. They need that, and the Toronto Raptors could get a lot for him. And then there's this. The Toronto Raptors are more than likely not going to be able to retain Fred Van Vliet. So he's going to be gone. So if Fred Van Vliet is gone after this season, and the Toronto Raptors think they can run it back with whatever is left, with Pascal Siakam, OG Anunoby, Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr., we're not going anywhere. You're going to be stuck. You're going to be here again, same time next year. And by here, I mean out of the playoffs, same time next year, right? Because it's unlikely that Fred Van Vliet is going to sign with the Toronto Raptors. He's looking for big money. And Gary Trent Jr. has opted into his contract. So he's going to stay with the Toronto Raptors. And so nothing has happened for the Toronto Raptors. No off-season trade, nothing. All we've done is a coach change and that's not going to do anything. And if we lose and if we lose Fred Van Vliet, like where are we going to be? I've proposed this before. You need to package Pascal Siakam, OG Anunoby, and you need to buy into rebuilding. That's what needs to happen. I mean, you need to rebuild. We need to rebuild because this team, I swear, is not going anywhere. And I was saying the same exact same thing last year in the off season when I was advocating that we go and get Kevin Durant. Go and get Kevin Durant, trade Pascal Siakam, Gary Trent Jr. a few draft picks for Kevin Durant when he asked for a trade and no other team in the league was trying to get him. I've been saying this for a while and it needs to happen. Pascal Siakam is great, but he's not that type of player. He's not an elevating, a game-changing, franchise-changing player. That's what you need. And if you don't have that, you need to rebuild. I've seen reports that the Toronto Raptors could go after Grady Dick if the Dallas Mavericks pass up over him or if other teams pass up over him. But I don't know if he's going to be there by the time the Toronto Raptors are on the board. And then also, will he make a huge change? I'm into drafting new talent. I'm into rebuilding around Scotty Barnes. But uh, it seems like the Toronto Raptors are trying to do something completely different. I will honestly be so frustrated by the time the season starts. We have again, Pascal Siakam, OG Anunoby, and a new head coach, and Scotty Barnes, and Fred Van Vliet's gone. I, I don't know how much longer I can scream, so it is what it is. Um, so make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time.